KTT. And the thing is, those were the big team fight mages that people were playing. Those were the two. Other than that, you were mostly just playing assassins. So both yeah. these guys forcing new options from the opposing team. They take out the two best tank top laners. They take out the two best DPS mid laners, which actually speaks towards a more early game, aggressive kill focused game. So every jungler left on the table. The question is who wants to pick what up? And it's actually going to be the Nidalee hover. Here we go. To me, it's interesting because do it. Emilek, she's been great in Nidalee, but Blink hasn't. But he still wants to first pick it and give the rest of the options over to SKT, which lets them grab this poppy. Well, the thing is, if we're going early game, you want MLXG to have Nidalee. Like, that is a pickup that you want. We saw it against, SK, uh, against CLG already. This guy can take over the map. Yeah, and we do note that Blank had one pick and ban phase where he had Nidalee available and ended up going with Lee Sin. But at the same time, earlier on in the tournament, SKT was willing to first pick Nidalee. So if you figure that they're going to more default back to their normal SKT state, they would potentially pick Nidalee in the first rotation. And right. since you're getting an early game focused game based on the ban phase, the Nidalee first pick makes a lot of sense. It's just the interesting thing though, is those two first pick Nidalee games started that four game loss streak yeah. for SKT. This is so interesting. When they ended up six and four at the end of the group stage here. So very interesting. The first pick Nidalee comes through and despite the top lane pinch, it's SK2 who get the poppy anyway. So unless Sleeper wants to play his famous Quinn in the matchup, we're going to see Trundle, I suppose, and they're not even going for it yet. And that is the interesting thing, because, you know, we've criticized the 131 out of this RNG lineup. However, when Quinn was a power pick, they would use it terrifically to set up flanks and really dictate that yeah. pace of the game. And even before any of the poppy nerfs, Quinn was used as a counter pick to the poppy. So there's a very real chance we see Looper's Quinn in this game. I mean, he played it in the finals against EDG when everyone thought it was forced out of the meta. So it's definitely something that he is very comfortable going back towards. Yeah. And, you know, SKT have a chance here if they go with Wolf's Trundle of pinching the support position, uh, top lane position even further for uh, RNG. And look at the hover, the fact that the blue team, that Royal never even went for the Trundle when there was no risk on picking that Lucian. Sivir was already grabbed up. There was no contest here. We're gonna wait to see what SKT yeah. picks for, but it seems like they don't even want to play tank top. And Wolf has also played Soraka later on into the group stage. Uh, it's something Aphromoo actually thinks is gonna happen more in the bracket stage, is people will be playing Soraka because it's been so successful. And it goes back to an older version of Wolf, like in 2015 when he played a bunch of Janus. So he can play range supports, he just hasn't played much of them lately. This is really dangerous, however. You have two... Uh, your duo lane has no way to escape. I mean, you have Siva old at level six, and you're going up against a Braum and Nidalee and a Lucian. If, that, if there is a kill threat in the bottom lane, that is already established right now, and Soraka is very easy to camp out and gank. Absolutely. It looks like SKT is going with another one of those kite back compositions. When we watch them in the group stage, or even when we actually pay much attention to them in the LCK split, very rarely are they the ones really forcing hard initiations. They are the best team in the world at kiting back, and that's what their team composition is built to do in this game. We'll see how hard RNG goes into the initiation camp to try and make that a punishable, punishable move. Uh, waiting on this one, looking like that they want to send LeBlanc into the front lines. Of course, can be stopped Ooh. up by both the Poppy and the Soraka Trundle in their own top. interesting ways. And yes, it will be Trundle top. So that is interesting. Uh, Trundle is played a lot in the LPL. Uh, oh! Whoa. All right. These teams have clearly been doing some lab work in the off weeks. Faker will be going with the mid lane Fizz. The lane dominant matchup for the top lane would be in Looper if we get standard lanes. In fact, these lanes do look a little bit swung in RNG's favor, especially with the Nidalee. But that Fizz uh, is going to take a little bit to wrap our heads around. That's yeah. going to be interesting. It was interesting because during the middle of this tournament, SKT had shied away from playing Assassin mids, went back to the Azir and Rise, the Lulu, the Zillion, back on Assassin down for Faker. And it looks like both teams do want to focus on opening up the map a little bit more because both top laners currently have Teleport as their summoner spell of choice, something that the LPL loved doing on LeBlanc. And now SKT from Korea are replicating the same on their Assassin mid laner. Yeah, that in is 51 games this year, Faker's played Fizz once. So it is in his pool. Every champion is in his pool, but it's been very scarce used. Unsurprising that Fizz is in the champion pool here. I feel like that's his natural place to be. And yeah, as long as summoners don't change, double teleport on the double assassins mid. Again, atypical, you talk about that being very normal for Chinese League of Legends. Well, we're here in the country, so I guess no big surprise here. Yeah, they just changed the one on the LeBlanc, so. Okay. 
Yeah, as we get ourselves through the rest of the picks and bands, the coaches shake hands and get off stage. It's now up to the 10 players on the Rift to get themselves into this match. Game one of the best of five. Tweet at LOL Esports, hashtag RNG winner, hashtag SKT win. If you're rooting for China or you're rooting for Korea, we are ready to go into this matchup. Yes, it will be that Ignite LeBlanc gets the teleport of Fakers, Fizz, and South Korea does own the Rift here. Higher percentage of their players brought out the icons, but now we are ready to get into game one. And so much of this game one is going to be about the early game with the jungle Nidalee in there right now. How much can MLXG punish Blank and the rest of SKT? If you think about their solo lanes, they're actually two fairly low wave clear early game lanes right here. And what is RNG going to do at level one? It looks like they're actually trying to push Faker out of vision and sneak in the brush. Ooh, I don't know if they quite got spotted by Faker, but they're hoping they can get some of that going through. But an early Trinket Ward by Blank spots that MLXG, Mata, and Wush are heading up. They should have seen that Trinket go down, so they know they're spotted. And it will be an invade with counter wards coming out from the bot lane of SKT. And this is one thing that RNG have done well all tournament long. Have a proactive early game. Ensure that you can get those standard lanes if that's what you're looking for. They've also got multiple first bloods before minions have even met in that first lane. One of them was a, with a very similar tactic there. So because they have picked these three winning lane matchups and an aggressive jungler, imperative that they're able to get standard lanes right now. Yeah, it's interesting that a lot of times when teams are looking to absolutely lane swap is when they will put those deep wards down. But it's also just to scout early on in the map. So you can still then try and use those wards to scout where the duo lane is. And it looks like RD is trying a delayed move out of their base so that once they are spotted by the deep wards SKT would have put down, they won't necessarily have time to react. Yeah, there they, they spot were spotted, the but SKT is already there, so they're trapped into these standard lanes. Royal making sure no one's sitting in a brush cheekily, and there will be fun of the two on two lane. But look at this, SKT waiting around a very long time to try to punish the Krug start. And that will still go to Royal Never Give Up's duo lane. They should also get an XP range in time which leads for a slight advantage to the Chinese duo. And Siva doesn't get the early push, more importantly. So this means that an earlier level two should come through out of RNG. Mm -hmm. And we also have to keep in mind that SKT was actually playing more towards the lane swap, starting with the double jungle, and Duke had to teleport top lane to match Looper. So already, if they get an early gank on Duke's lane, it would snowball Looper ahead. Great early guessing there by RNG. I guess they did actually see the fact that the Sivir and the Soraka had been the wards that warded that bottom lane and said, well, unless they recall this second, we get to match them up. Well done by RNG, and we get to watch the top lane fight. The teleportless Duke is something that Royal could have tracked. There's a level two first as well for the duo lane, so all these advantages are theirs right now, but it can always be turned around later. Bang, late on the Q as well, missing the CS. Yeah, and it's a little things, right? They know that Duke double jungled because he got level two off just the melee minions and one of the range. So like, you 100% know that Poppy has been in that position and this just plays so far into MLXG's hands. See how much quicker he is at clearing out his own jungle, getting around the map on the Nidalee over the Graves. Yep, already gonna have that experience advantage on Graves and Blank just because of the champion matchup, unless MLXG makes a mistake, will not be able to catch him. And then we also have to keep in mind the early minion lead that, M that RNG got by taking the small Krug meant they hit the level two power spike and that means they're gonna be able to consistently shove SKT in. So these are now three pushed in lanes for SKT and a jungler who is farming slowly. So this is completely in RNG's time to capitalize. And so far, tracking the first three waves, Royals duo has missed three CS, and SKTs have missed six, based on the amount of minions that would be available to both these players at that time. So the duo lane is growing their own minion lead up about 70 gold or so. And you can see, oh, predicted that Wolf would juke back into the queue. Didn't happen though, Mata doesn't land the skill shot. They may have even burned a summoner spell if that ended up landing, because it would oh, have yeah, been he a had to flash pretty that. good range without minions to hold them back. Either way, they're just going to continue to try and extend this farm advantage, and SKT is going to look to absorb, but it's tricky to do that with this Fizz lane. And this is one of the scary points going in for SKT. They are, in my opinion at least, too often willing to pick a passive bottom lane against a lane that they know wants to go aggressive, and you already heard Deficio speak about it. At one point, you have to either resign to being incredibly passive and just absorbing a CS deficit in a lane, or you have to try and fight fire with fire. And we've seen them do that in both games they played against RNG, but with losing lanes. So this time around, I do expect them to stay at home a little bit more and just play for that late game scaling. Uh, looking at individual performances right now that we have a two and a half hundred gold lead for MLXG as that jungle lead is going quite nicely. You're still seeing these very small advantages in the mid lane and the bot lane. Oh, Faker did oh, not jump not in time. Enough. He still took the burst. That, that means he has to recall. recall. Yeah, I mean, 
Faker has been known as the god of counter matchups. If he has to, the ability to do a counter pick, he's usually able to do it. But early on, at least in this LeBlanc lane, he hasn't been playing it to its optimization. He's taken too much damage, forcing an early recall and allowing MLXG to get really good wards into Blank's jungle. That could make things very difficult. The top jungle's already cleared anyway, so the rest of Royal can assume that Blink would be bot side until he's spotted on this ward right here, but it's too late. MLXG has already taken the Raptor camp away, and there's still nothing for Blink to kill. Mm -hmm. As he pink wards to get rid of the ward he saw, really nice expectation there. And really I, like the shallow, the I like the shallow pink ward out of Blank there. He needs to secure his own jungle right now. I mean, it's imperative for uh, Graves to be able to farm up and start getting to the uh, team fight stages of the game, and he's not going to be able to do that with MLXG in his face all the time. So SKT right now, they're just in consolidation phase. You can see that they've warded up the river, all the entrances. They want to be able to track MLXG and just be able to push out the landing phase. There we go, Bang finally did not have the cooldown up, but guess what, Woosh is gonna get rooted up, so unless Nidalee's coming down, actually it's LeBlanc who is, they flash in for the play, Exhaust is on Woosh, and LeBlanc is almost in range, Fager cannot join, the Q's gonna land, Woosh still dodging forward, Summoner heal burned, four summoners down for three, and Royal yeah. down on health. I think Royal actually goes too early on that gank. Xiao Hu was never going to be able to make it in time, and SKT get a three summoner for four summoner trade. Yes, they're going to be going back to base, but because RNG used their flashes as well, they will have to recall after two. But be careful, this is going to be dangerous for Looper, who pushes up, but Blank is right there next to Duke, trading blows back and forth. Looper getting a bit injured, he burned his ult to get some health <laughs> back, and yeah, he's a big trundle. He'd shopped. See, he had he just teleport back into lane, and he's got Call Corruption Potion, so he might not even be forced back to base off that one. I do not think that was a good gank by Blank. And this is something that EDG actually did against RNG in the final. You know, they recognized that they want to go into passive lanes. So EDG bought double Call and just said, we're willing to scale with you. One of them was on their Trundle top lane. So I think that this is actually quite smart out of Looper. He understands he has a winning lane matchup already. Let's just continue to scale up. Use that Call. It's good sustain in lane as well for the Trundle. It is, yeah, he's gonna get plenty of health back in this one. Shahu clearing away minions, getting hit up by Faker, Whoa. but nice chain's gonna land inside a minion wave, couple hundred damage dealt, but Faker's still gonna be okay, and he will be able to match the minion lead, partially thanks to Shahu's earlier roam that amounted to nothing. And we actually have an equal gold game right now. Yeah. Good and catch I, up by SKT. I really do feel like that is heavily credited to SKT, the fact that Faker is still even in CS after having to do the early recall against Shahu, and the fact that all their lanes are actually holding even is very good. They might burn a flash here with this gank. And they did. Nicely played by Duke. If he juked back, he goes back in a trundle slow, gets a bunch more damage dealt to him, so he flashes to get away, but now we get Wolf running down for the deep wards. We had MLXG do that not long ago, but those wards have all timed out, and now Wolf controlling the southern jungle here, and he can track all of MLXG's moves. After seeing him topside, he knows he can't get stopped while doing this. Walks by a pink ward and feels safe enough to push it. As Blank is not far behind, Wolf does have backup, but he can't finish it. Now that the Sivir lane has BF Sword as well, uh, it's actually very difficult for RNG to punish, especially once they hit level six, it makes them incredibly hard to gank unless you're sending about four people at them because they can run away with Sivir ultimate as well as the Soraka ultimate for sustain. And this is kind of what RNG's worry was, right? If we go early game, have SKT short up enough of their weakness to just put on the brakes, you know, take it easy, just play a very slow tempo, uh, even paced early game and scale up with picks like Sivir. Uh, yeah. And they've definitely proven that they're not going to go aggressive at all in this early uh, phase. Yeah, and I think the interesting thing about this, though, is that when you do look at the team fight phase, it's arguable who's going to have the better team fight composition, but MLXD still trying to push the tempo, knowing Duke's teleport and flash are down. They're going to be trying to deny him off the minion waves. He's going to do so. It's already a 21 minion lead, but MLXD running topside after realizing, or kind of when he realized that Faker was being donated a blue buff. Right now, though, Xiaohu doesn't quite spot Faker. I believe now he does, and there's going to be no real turnaround, but Duke did still lose some minions. You can see a 500 gold lead now for Royal, at least temporarily largely from the top lane of the jungle matchup. Attempt to push again on the bot side. They know the junglers aren't around, so it's the two-on-two -two damage. Wolf healing up Bang and staying alive in this one. Ulti's burned, though. Sivir and Lucian both pop theirs, and Bang has had great reflexes, constantly spell shooting whenever it's up from cooldown. And once again, the further you can nullify this lane, ensure that you're going equal on the Sivir, make them play against the minion wave, uh, the more I think it just suits SKT's style of play right now. Ooh, good damage out of Shahu, and even knowing the range the chain's tether would be getting out of range of a possible counterattack. Yeah, really competitive lane. You can see these guys are actually sacrificing a lot of CS in favor of Harass. Low CS per minute early on in this lane, about 70 to 70 is what the count's gonna be yeah. uh, 10 minutes in. 
MLXG trying to sneak this dragon. I wonder if Blank's going to go down to check. He may do he so. He wants the Rift Scuttle. He's definitely going to yeah, check. Yeah, he's going to see it. He will see it. There it is. And MLXG, is he going to choose to stay for this one? No, but now Blank can go for it. They're calling in reinforcements. MLXG is also not comfortable. Uh, sorry, Blank's also not comfortable. Ooh, can he tag it in time? He oh, can. He's going to get it. Execute. Execute. He's going to get it. Ooh. That was a tight one. MLXG secures the first dragon of the game. The first objective of the game goes to the Chinese squad on home soil. Yeah, and it was just the fact that Faker wanted the recall in there. He didn't want to fight for it at all, so they actually make the conscious choice to give it over. And look at this. Looper just going for damage up oh. against Duke, and Duke with the ultimate. Doesn't buy the time. That means Faker's teleport means absolutely nothing. He did it from base, but he's going to have a really slow walk back and might lose a full wave. And now Looper says no teleport, no problem. Let's go back for the fight. Duke low on HP, yeah. still no flash. Looper's going to flash to catch him, and that's a solo kill. First blood for Looper. And that's just bad communication. I mean, Duke had burnt the ultimate, no flash. Not even, a, like, there's no way you get out of that, and he stays in the lane. Teleport yeah. would have been available if he had it just backed off and recalled. Total misplay by Duke right there. He could have reset the wave and only lost a few minutes. He was already losing the lane. So sometimes you get in that I think I can hold on mentality. So that is going to be a very big trundle when you move into the rest of the game. The question will be against this really disengaging team of SKT, whether or not he's going to be able to make it count. And you know, it's it's the little things as well. Now Blank is shown topside. It means that bottom can recall for free. It's not going to be shoved in. They take Rift Herald as well. One it's small misstep like that can start snowballing the game. And it's about the vision. It's about the information. Not only the solo kill they gave over. Yeah, and I think for the first time all tournament, they don't give the Rift Herald to the jungler. It goes to Looper here, so he's going to be looked to really power through that lane onto Duke and just kind of trundle on him, outstat him more. Individual gold is already up 900 for him. Plus the Dragon buff, plus Herald, but here comes Faker onto Shao, who lands the Shark as well, looks to follow, and he actually does land the E, but it's not quite enough damage. Shao, who nearly went down, MLXG does not need to heal him. And there's no true shot barrage, he'll get away. Yeah, SKT gonna try and make something back, and he had the Abyssal Scepter, I believe, before Shao. I think Shao got it on the recall. I could be No, wrong he definitely about had that. it while recalling. Okay, uh, but the main thing that I do want to point out that's so interesting about this game is with the Rift Herald on the Looper, they actually might be going for a 1-3-1. Uh, that is the best use of a Trundle who is ahead rather than trying to force team fights is just create a split-pushing monster, and it'll be such a test about whether or not they can get the deep wards down in order to do a proper 1-3-1. Especially because he's going Ravenous. Like, if it was yeah. a Titanic, I would be like, you know, maybe they can team fight. Raven Ravenous generally means unless you get three items on your Trundle, you're stuck you in a You cannot team fight yeah. well. Yeah. Not against Sivir and Graves kiting you, not a chance. Going again for damage onto Duke. Yeah. I actually hate the Ravenous Hydra on Trundle. I think he has enough sustain with the Titanic and is just better in most situations plus escape. But the Ravenous is just so all in on this one strategy that he will sustain no matter what. He can absorb a gank, come back in one minion wave, he'd be full health again. If he lives, which he has if less he health lives. than with the Titanic Hydra. And it's even further than that, right? It means you can withstand Poppy's damage whilst you're on turret and then sustain it back into the next creep mm -hmm. wave. So I actually think it is dependent on securing a 1-3-1. One, one. They actually need to know where Blank is now yeah. to make sure he gets the free damage well, on the is. turret. Then what she does not chase in, he saw Faker was defending and just gets rid of the regular ward that he put down. But now Looper's here to cut off the Graves. Plenty Ooh. of damage there, forcing the flash. I believe Quick Draw got stuffed. Here's the engage on a bang, but he flashes away from the Glacial Fissure. Slowed back up by Mata's Winter's Bite, but the easy wave clear and yeah, the Royal Dueling cannot fight through that minion wave. And credit to this SKT bottom lane. I mean, Mata's flashing at them, ulting pretty much on cooldown. He really wants to start some action in this bottom lane, but every single time they're burning abilities and summoner spells early to negate a lot of that aggression. In yeah. fact, they're pretty even in CS as well and have quite a lot of exactly. control over the bottom lane. Without ganks, Soraka's the great equalizer in lane, like especially Soraka's Sivir. They're just going to continue to shove out. Even if you take a little bit of poke while you're clearing the minion wave, you will clear the minion wave and the other team will be forced into an even lane with you, which is why a lot of people actually try and lane swap early against Soraka mm -hmm. or beat it early. Because if you don't do those things, she's going to be able to win the lane or at least stay even. Jeez, look at this. Talk about one winning a gang. lane. Well, there were two games. There was one that forced a flash away from Duke and a second one that forced him off a wave earlier on. So two attempts by MLXG. Tilted the matchup enough that Looper has now crushed the matchup level 11 to level 9. Cole is almost done stacking. It's got two left. Yeah. And he's crushing this. And now they need to get the deep wards if he wants to pressure turret number two. Or we'll see RNG abandon the top lane and try and use the two level advantage with the Ravenous Hydra, which isn't the optimal way to take advantage of his item build to team fight. But it might be what RNG end up doing. There's even a third possibility. I mean that Xiaohu has complete kill pressure right now on Duke. Just 
send your duo mid lane. That you've already proven that it's very, very hard to kill this lane right now with the way Bang and Wolf are playing. Although that's a lot of damage. Yeah, maybe Bang and Wolf are going to be trying to kill Woosh because he has trouble sustaining if he takes any poke. He's taking a lot of these cues, plenty Four of attack man. damage. They could five man this if they get the position. Poppy is top lane, does have teleport. Trundle in the same position. Graves coming down, Fizz as well. Look at the culling on the Bang. Will get restocked thanks to Soraka being a champion. And there's going to be no crazy flashy plays happening just yet. Mid laner staying equal. And we once again look at the mid lane as MLXG takes the farm and forces Faker out. He's level 11. Red buff slow just is on. <laughs> yeah, jumps over the wall. But now looking for the play. Oh, good dodge by Faker. Gets away from the chains. That could have been a flash force if it landed. Absolutely. He'd already used the playful trickster. That's actually my favorite, most annoying Nidalee gank. You walk into the lane with red buff <laughs> and auto attack. attack. And it's so effective because you have to use an escape spell against it. And look, even though the gank in the bottom lane wasn't successful, what it does draws Faker down there, draws Blank down there. All of a sudden, Looper gains control of top side of jungle. He's able to dictate exactly where Duke can go. Ooh. And I gotta yeah. say, I really love what Royal did in pick and ban. I'll talk about it in a second as the fish comes into the shower. Knock it in the air. Good damage from Faker. Bang Zulti lands. Sorry, Blanks does, and that's a kill for Faker in the mid lane. But here comes MLXG. Sirocco. A flash and a hop to get away. But a flash pillar from Looper is gonna take him down. Looper holds all the kills of Royal. And even though it's a one for one, once again, Juke just burned a teleport to try and get into a gank he had no right of even looking at. Yeah, the counter this push is actually going to be real. Looper can take the turret wow. easily. Walks up to Blank, says, get away from your own base. Troll King completely. And this is just a little mistake we're talking about in SKT's gameplay. All of a sudden, Looper has teleport advantage over Duke because Duke just burns a summoner spell. Like, there's no way that that's ever going to be a fight in your favor. Yeah, Looper way ahead of Duke here. Duke's teleports haven't been great all tournament, and Faker did play this quite well to his credit, but then his was just outnumbered down the stretch. He absorbs the poke from Xiaohu. Xiaohu can't dodge the shark, and since he just got harassed, there's no way he can dodge this right here. Faker guesses right on the clone, is able to finish him off, and then even jukes the spear from MLXG, but once Looper is here, there was just nothing else to escape with. Ultimate ticks him down. Why start that teleport? They're going to lose that trade regardless. And now they can't match teleport. Looper has the teleport advantage. And these are SKT's early game fears fully realized. This is 4,000 gold 17 minutes in. And the gold is two turrets going down thanks to Looper and Shahu making mid lane go down. Looper and MLXG making top lane go down. Bot lane still going equal. But of course, Sir will have a great late yeah. game as time goes on. Dragon number two should be almost no contest. And now SKT will have to continually concede these objectives with the teleport advantage down as well as the 4,000 gold lead. This is disaster time for SKT right now. Especially because RNG's game plan relies on just keeping Trundle in a side lane, either top if you want to stack dragons or bottom if you want to open up the Baron area with 30 CS, 2,000 gold. There's no way Duke can stay with it. And I want to finish complimenting Royal's champ select plan. Ban the two best top laners. You expect SKT to take Poppy. They hand him the champion mm -hmm. on the silver platter. First round red side, grab the Poppy. That's cute. We'll take that Trundle, yeah. crush the matchup. If you can secure that lane, even before the Poppy nerfs, Trundle would win the lane. Poppy was better because of the utility that she brought to team fights, as well as having better early lane swap scenarios. But Trundle is just going to outstat Poppy, especially considering the nerf. And RNG is actually making people question why we haven't seen more Trundle top, because people actually haven't tried to pinch the top lane matchup into giving the other team the poppy to take the trundle and i gotta say huge props to looper because even for duke to get here he had to battle through someday and smev who are two of the very best probably the very best top laners in korea and here's looper making it look almost easy and let's talk about how he won the lane it wasn't through a teleport it's not through anything marta did which is what we used to compliment him on it was just individual micro outplaying sure he had some help but the gank that uh, the first blood that he actually went for was just him soloing out duke mm -hmm. again advantages were gained by mlxg we want to give some props to the manager screen right here this nidalee that was first picked for them royal wanted that early pressure it has happened he's up 24 minions he's up 1200 gold yeah. over blank and he also went rylize before roa which for this game i love why defer your power with the rod of ages when you can get the immediate power with rylize to try and snowball the game because rng also has the fear in the back of their head the first game against skt was 60 minutes the second was 54. they need to be able to close them out more quickly than that and that's what they're going for with these item builds 
and there's like little things about Rylai's of why I like it. Generally, when you're against an Italy, you walk back in your creep wave, gank top. Oh, Faker's top. And this could be trouble. Super has popped ulti on a Duke. He's got plenty of stats, but he's still getting whittled down by these champions. Faker jumping around, but low on mana, and Looper just does not care. Finally, he's so doing the health bar. The Graves only oh. comes in, the Wish as well, and it's a four versus one to take down Looper. But meanwhile, bottom lane, they've completely forced the duo off. They're going to lose a turret for it, even though they shut down the huge trundle. Advantage still in RNG. Yeah, that just goes to show you the power of the Trundle at this stage in the game. They do kill him, though, which can be a dangerous thing, but that is such a sacrifice of map pressure. Basically, two and a half people, then a Soraka ultimate pitching in on that one, and it's going to be a while before SKT can bounce back to these lanes to get control of the waves. CLG watching this game very intently. Could be their opponents in the finals that they can win tomorrow's best of five against Flash Wolves, the number two and three teams in the playoffs here. And SKT, by the way, burned five ultimates in that engage. Four for the top lane fight, but Bang also popped his ult to get away from the bot lane tower dive from earlier. Great dodge by Shahu getting away, but definitely a power lead right now for Royal. Dagger's still rooted up, but again, healed by Wolf. He's there to keep these lanes salvaged. Kill-wise, it's still 2-2. Two to two. SKT are keeping up in that regard, but they are losing the map. Three turrets and two dragons to zero each. Yeah, and losing the map like this is where you're going to be looking to see what type of deep warding RNG can do and how well they can do the 1-3-1. One, one. Even though they didn't have the wards for Looper to successfully run away from the gank, they had the map pressure to still punish the play. As long as RNG can keep getting positive trades whenever they have Looper getting attention spent on them, they will continue to extend their lead. But if that stops, that's when SKT will get back into the game. And this is kind of the biggest question. You know, they've built this gold lead. It's 5,000 right now. Can they pressure the Baron area? Can mm -hmm. they actually set up good enough vision to allow this split push bottom lane to continue? Wow. Mata was alone there, and Faker didn't go for the shark. There was only Wush anywhere near him. I feel like if that was Royal, they would have gone for that kill and, like, assumed no one was there. But there were no, there was no vision at all by SKT. It's a defensible choice to not go all in on that play, but that actually was a kill that was potentially there. Yeah, and that is one of the big philosophical differences between these teams. SKT will almost always only go for fights where they have full knowledge of the enemy team, whereas RNG is willing to play by instinct and go in sometimes without full vision. <laughs> How about going in under a turret with three people behind him, Looper taking up the damage and doesn't even care because look at this turret going down. RNG swapped the duel lane back to the bot side of the map, away from the Baron, and that's theirs. And this is something that SK2 were doing against Flash Wolves, doing it against RNG. They're bleeding turrets without trading back in any fashion. It's four turrets to zero right now, and RNG is not a team known for their macro play. They're just cutting off the jungle with good vision uh, because they're stronger. There's no way that SKT can cheat through. Mm -hmm. And they're respecting them arguably too much, as you were saying, Freak. The rule for RNG is if you can't see a player, they're not there. The rule is for SKT, if you can't see them, they could be there. Mm -hmm. And it's just showing in the gameplay. And now anyone who's there from RNG is going to be more powerful. We were talking about Looper winning his matchup. Okay, good for him. And MLXG out farming. But because of this four turret advantage, every single member of RNG has more gold than their opposite member on SKT. Yeah, and from minute one, RNG had the pressure in the lanes. That's why SKT has not fallen a single turret. They're trying to group up. Like, the idea with this Soraka Sivir thing is you sit outside the turret, you shove down the minion wave, you absorb the poke, and you out-trade while the other team tries to initiate on you. Or oh. Faker goes in and makes a play. They go in on MLXG. The wards were there. Nice and an SKT, but Shadow oh. turning it back around, picks off Wolf. Jungler for support. Now Faker's got a kite around, and here's Duke's Another teleport. Another terrible again. teleport. Again. Cancelled! Duke, I haven't even shown up to a lane yet with this. We talked about the disengage you can play with Soraka, but once Soraka is down, you have to just abandon ship. You no longer play that game. So the instant Duke started channeling that teleport, we knew it was a mistake because Wolf was already down. And once again, this is just little things in SKT's game plan that you don't expect to see. And Loop has found Duke again. Uh, Duke down a level, looking to fight for the Krug. <laughs> Looper gets it and walks away. Pillar actually... Faker's on the way. Slightly on the wrong side because here comes Faker. Sibber not far away either. Dragon, Bang but is there's, coming. There's no way Looper can survive. Pushing to try to push Looper into the wall. The Fizz is coming ult. up. Gonna Dragon ult? has been grabbed. Looper wearing Dragon 3 flashes. Ults Faker still trying to run to his turret. And can they oh even get the dive? God. No, they can't. Looper is completely unstoppable. Goes MLXG's back in, coming. tanks a shark, and maybe but off a bit more than he can chew. Oh, the Just kill. kidding. They're going to take down Faker through the wish. Now on to Duke, and his duchy is going to belong to China. As Duke goes down, Mata roams up. A double kill for Looper. That is the type of 
fight that just breaks your morale for a game because they had given up so much to try and stop the trundle, but he was unstoppable right there. And it was a 25 second gank that SKT could not convert on. Yeah, but once again, you know, that was maybe an opportunity for RNG to open up the map, take down Baron. You had four members on that side. Instead, they commit to this 1-3-1 structure. Deficio said it best, you know, I think eight out of 10 games they have first blood. Two out of 10 games they have first turret. And that was a situation where they got the kills and didn't turn it into a big macro advantage. Yeah, but this is the game where they also get first turret. I think that's what's so tremendous about this performance so far from RNG, because they kept their aggressive lanes, but they are actually playing the map right now. Everywhere SKT goes leaves a vacuum somewhere else on the map, and that's where RNG is sucked towards to make the play. And this was actually, Funnily enough, we criticized it. The Ravenous Hydra doing work during the extension of this fight. Yeah, it's it certainly so was. And you know, a couple of weird decisions one more time. Duke flashing here, not getting Doesn't the wall get stun. Done. Go forward, get it against the guaranteed wall that the Trundle just mm -hmm. walked against. Duke's play this game has just not been good enough for, S uh, for SKT. And, and then Looper, the communication on point between the top laner and the jungler. Looper's so confident to go back in. Faker's ultimate comes back up during the duration of this fight. And it was actually a bait when he went back in because MLXG had just arrived for the heal. Like, there's just so many stats on Looper right now with his 3,500 gold advantage over Duke that Faker was completely outmanned, even though he was trying his best to carry this game. 100% of SKT's kills are on Faker, and he can't actually take advantage of it. And this is why they seem to go away from playing Assassin mid lane, is they know Faker can get a lead. But this tournament has proved that that is not enough when he's on an Assassin pick. I think they wanted to go early with them, try and drag them around the map, and maybe a little bit surprised with how RNG are playing this 1-3-1. And this is actually why when we were trying to theorize the pick and ban phase, we thought that if Azir and Rise weren't going to be in Faker's pool, he would go to a Lulu or a Zillion and play more of a control-focused game because, believe it or not, this year for SKT, that's been their most successful strategy in the LCK and even here at MSI. But they go back to the Assassins once again. It doesn't appear to be working. If they do end up losing this game, as it appears they will with the way RNG is trying to pressure in all lanes, I wonder if they stick with that strategy. It's the beauty of a best of five. You've got a lot of games to figure out what's going on. and. Typically, the best teams are the one that immediately reverse course after game one. They don't say, ah, we played it bad, play the same champ select. I've seen that sometimes. It's never pretty. And this time around, SKT might actually change things up if they can't yeah. turn something around here. I'm also getting ahead of myself a little bit. This is still SKT with the Sivir. They yeah. know how to stall, and we're only 27 minutes in. Thankfully for RNG, they've got the Braum to kink things up, and now he's got to run away. Suddenly, they disengage, working out for SKT. Fakers, and he picks up Mata. There's a the teleport in for Duke. This could be that Roll turnaround the fight. Looper. They're looking for Looper. That Trundle is tanky, but he will he's be down. going down. A two for nothing. SKT do find the comeback team fight. Shao, who has to run? The wave is cleared. Yeah, and once again, this is the first time that we see them go into 1-3-1, one, one, double teleport into the mid lane, and over-aggression out of Mata costs them. Yeah, beautiful collapse by SKT right there. Never count them out of a game. Every game they've played against RNG this tournament, RNG's had gold leads for pretty much all of it. And the same is true in this game, but that type of play from SKT makes you know they're not out of the game yet. And once again, this is a composition from SKT that wants to kite back. Why try and hard engage? Go to an objective, set up correctly, RNG. MLXG is still <laughs> looking to go aggressive. Uh, like, that fight should not happen in the mid lane. That team fight should happen around Baron. Make them hard engage on you. Do not give them the opportunity to kite yep. you back down a lane. And that's exactly the type of flaw we would talk about with RNG. For 25 and a half minutes, they were playing the macro game quite well. But that time, they didn't have enough pressure going on the sideline, side lanes to make the collapse from SKT punishable. And instead, RNG collapsed in very late after they had already lost their tanks and it allowed a very fortuitous fight for SKT. And you can see the kind of damage that Bang is able to put out on this Sivir. Normally, I think Braum is great into the champion. You can stop Ricochet, you can stop the Q. But with how fast Mata died and got pushed out in that fight, Bang got so much done there. Royal, I believe, should even know that there's wards in the back of that pit. They've been there for a little while now, and, and the Baron attempt means nothing. And they don't have a teleport. Get Looper into the bottom lane. The other four members go back, buy a pink ward, set up around the objective properly. Yeah, I think they're punish the, the double teleport, obviously. But here, SKT has three people in the mid lane, and as soon as Mata goes in, he wasn't respecting the double teleport, actually. They were still a little bit out of sync. Duke should have been in a lot earlier there, but Fake was the one who goes in and makes the play initially. He then zones out the damage dealers for RNG and allows SKT the time to kill Looper. And yeah, they're gonna be setting up for Dragon 4 here. 
30 seconds till it spawns. Looper did just burn his own teleport. Actually looked for a flank on the right side of the map. And now the Renegade Rescue Team, a flash gets away from the Shark. Faker forced to disengage himself now. Here and there's go. that fight splitting ulti from Mata. Blank low on health. He has to flash away now as well. But Xiao, who nearly enraged, silenced out by Soraka, will have to jump right back out. Bot lane was actually pushed in and SKT have their second turret now. And that's exactly the type of fight you want if you're the Soraka team because they just absorbed that fight. RNG doesn't sustain up as well as them. And now four members on SKT are sitting at full health, whereas RNG is down some ultimates and much more health. Wolf putting him back up to full. Banks fails. She gets turned around by the pillar. Has to flash away. Blank a little bit low, but Mata is maybe going to go down. Pops the shield and Faker has to go right back out. Whoosh! Looking for Blank. Can't quite land all the damage. MLXG very low. His mana pool's too shallow to heal everyone up as much as Wolf can. So Royal will have less health. Ooh. SKT has been playing these fights so well right now, but they need to be able to disengage. It's hard for them to initiate. And they're not going to stop this one. So Dragon 4 picked up. Luber puts the pillar down. The traffic cone says stop, beware, and they're going to get away. Level 17 on the Trundle. Highest level in the game. He's still the man to watch out for. Three huge completed items, and Randuin's isn't far away. And so the clock continues on this game. Fifth Dragon now six minutes away. They can get someone into that bottom lane, start pushing it out, try and set up around the Baron. All they need to do right now, RNG, is create pressure points. Don't go for the fights like you were against CLG that ultimately cost you the game. Set up the map correctly. But again, they walk out of base one more time. Doran's on your AD carry, no pink ward. They buy an amp tome on their mid laner, no pink ward. Yep, I mean, track MLXG. He's got two open item slots. They still have the Dorans, as you said, but he is going halfway defensive with the Hex Drinker and then also aggressive with the BF Sword. And RNG hasn't been setting up very successful Baron Baits throughout the whole tournament. They've just been hoping to get a late game team fight around the area without necessarily prepping it in the way a Korean team would. So can't say we're too surprised with what's happening right now. So six and a half thousand is the gold lead for Royal Never Give Up. Which they've had a lot of the times, and they've still lost a couple of games here. One to Counter-Logic Gaming, one to SKT right here. They actually lost the game to SKT, still holding on to a gold lead, so... They lost both their games holding yes, on to gold did. leads. <laughs> I mean, the one against CLG was bigger, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was almost shameful. 17,000 gold yeah. against CLG, but it was more like five or 6,000 gold against SKT. And this is actually closer to the game one for me against SKT than the game two. Game two is much more of a bloodbath. But game one was RNG jumping out to an early lead, actually getting a lot of picks onto Faker, and then SKT continually being able to disengage, farm up, until they all reach six item power points, and then RNG was able to win a team fight actually around Dragon number six, if you can believe it. So we could actually be in store for another similar game like that. Yeah, we certainly could. And you know, touching on item builds quickly, we see another third item, Lich Bane out of MLXG. It was something that a lot of people criticized. In this game, 1-3-1 one, one split push, where Nidalee should be controlling the jungle and then chipping away at turrets. I don't mind it, but if they ever get into these 5v5 team fights, it is outright a poor item choice over something mm -hmm. like Azonia's Hourglass. So RNG's decision-making in this game now has to be on point because they've even committed themselves further to this through item builds. Yeah, MLXG has 30 magic resist, the base value he has. So he basically takes true damage from Faker, who, yeah, would basically one-shot him. He's got to be very afraid of his positioning here, maybe going for Azonia's next, which will help MLXG some. He can outplay the fish and things like that, but it's a lot of damage dealers, right? Trundle only half tank in a way because he went for Ravenous Hydra, mm -hmm. and Mata's Braum only has so much gold. Yeah, it's a four-item mid laner on Shaohu compared to just three completed items on Faker, but it's because he's gone with some of the cheaper items from Relanomicon and Voidstaff, both lower in cost. But SKT definitely bouncing back in this game. It was five to 6,000 gold eight minutes ago, and it's still 5,000 gold. So the percentage difference is lower now, even if the absolute is the same. Ooh, nice attempt there. Makes Faker jump forward. Burns cool. Playful tricks around. So that is exactly why I like Rylai's on. Nidalee, by the way. The counter is walk with your minion wave, right? You can't get hit by those big spears. But with the Lutens triggers. The Ludens triggers are slow. So you just throw spears at minion waves all game long. And you maybe get a setup for a team fight. The last item I also want to touch on is the Infinity Edge onto Bang. 
Third item Infinity Edge means if he gets the crits in the team fights, it's massive. But if he's low, wow. he can easily get bursted down. Wolf burned his flash. He was ignited as well. Shao Hu burned his own flash to get in. So more summon was lost by RNG, but Wolf will have to recall for this, yeah. which gives they might go some time. Baron. Yes, to go right away for Baron. They swept out the pit. There are no wards for SKT. Looking for Black on the other side. They actually land the chains. They're going to go in for Graves, but he gets out just barely with collateral damage. Looper pops the pillar, but no one caught out by it. And they haven't even forced the teleport from Duke right now, so they're going to continue to force yeah, down as they do kill it very quickly. This has got to be the fight, but it's not like they prepped it hugely. No the one way no poppy. is the uh, Sivero. That's gone. We'll Rage see if they hear it. They got it. That's the Baron. Blake flashes forward just to get caught by the Brawl Multi. Now bang in the bad spot. Pillar catches him and he goes down to Shahu. The teleport is late from Duke. It's a 5v4, but he sends Looper away. 4v4 for a time. Now Duke taking plenty of damage. Stunned up. They get the Wolf. Pass, but Wolf goes down. Shahu on a Killing spree and the chase in for Duke. A nice slow, a flash away from MLX. G Faker wants the kill. He gets oh. it. And now can he get any more? Pops the Zonius. Now can he get over the wall? The answer is yes, because Woosh gave him the opportunity. But flash the chase does pick up the kill. Eight to six and four v one two on the map. Yeah, and four still have Baron buff. It's a Trundle, a very Fedler block as well as Illusion. They just might push down. There's 50 seconds on the mid lane. I think Duke's teleport into that fight was late, and RNG just punched him right in the mouth as they're trying to dilly-dally around the Baron pit. They go for it. They get the fight afterwards. Blake went in for a steal. They should be included. Blake's going to go down. His health bar is just that. Whoosh has gotten another kill for himself. Nine to six now on the scoreboard. Revives coming in in four seconds. The bot lane will be back for That's SKT. It. So Royal's out, but they've gotten a ton. Yeah, power of Siva there, respecting it. She has a wave clear, even against Baron Dark minions because she's gone the Infinity Edge. What a turnaround, however, from RNG. They yeah. finally commit to the Baron. And that's why having something like a Trundle or a Maokai is so good for this team because it can just tank it up. And once again, no Silver Ult means there's no way in. Yeah, and also only one blue trinket on SKT, which was on cooldown, so they couldn't actually scout the Baron pit very well. Once again, Duke's teleport really late. Bang is already down, and then he just knocks Looper away, which when the fight is over, stops their chase very slightly. Wolf is also positioned very far forward because they were doing a slow tunnel into the pit. All in all, RNG did prep this quite well, but SKT needed to teleport in a lot sooner. And this will be fifth dragon they're going to be able to pick up as well. Fifth dragon overlapping with Baron. You can see Woosh. Yeah, a bit too far to the right. You could have saved this flash by not giving Faker a Q target. Ultimately, not a huge deal. And look, it's RNG incredibly far ahead in their home country. And Sivir is great in front to back comps. When both teams line up, tanks in front, damage dealers behind because when she hits the tank she's hitting the damage dealers lucian is horrible in front to back comps because all you can do is put all of your damage into the big meat shield in the front that should be duke but because he's always late to these team fights it never sets up that way absolutely and now we're in the situation where the pushing begins baron on for a little bit longer baron here and, and fifth yes, dragon dragon the ultimate five buffs evaporates towers there's one reduced to rubble into a gaseous form if you want to take the literal meaning of evaporates here and now pushing forward that's going to be a dead inhibitor number two 11,000 gold lead looking for the death knell right now Baron timing out, Dragon's still on. And look at the confidence, walking yeah. minions into the base. Now we'll go bottom lane. We're going to clean this one up. This is not what they did against CLG. They disrespected CLG, lost the game with good reason because CLG turned that one on a dime, but they're making sure they're not making the same mistakes out of against SK, SKT. We asked if they could do it. Yeah. They definitely can. Basically, SKT is going to need an assassination on either Wu Shaohu, in my opinion, to stop this one, or Bang is just going to have to be able to free hit everyone. They're walking straight into this one, and they need to wait for the waves of super minions oh, to Mata. hit. Gotta but be Looper's careful. actually flanked around the back, the one-man army. And he bought so much time. That's the turret going down. The final inhibitor will drop as well. Under 40 minutes. Royal looking to close it out. A nice stop, Shaohu can't quick it in, thanks to Duke's play. And one more time, no Bang ult means the assassination is now much harder. And here is maybe the final push. On to the Nexus turrets themselves. One's gone down. Faker in the back line. Looks for Mata. He'll get the kill. Pops the Zonius. Looper low as well. SKT trying to climb back in. And they will get that second kill. Two down for Royal. And they will have to give up this push for now. Yep, they have to regroup, but they've done a bunch of damage to the base. All but one turret killed, all three inhibitors. The danger here is that SKT is going to free farm three waves of minions and catch up a little bit in items, but the next push, when these guys respawn, RNG is going to go for the end of the game. By the way, that's why we call Faker the best player in the world, mm -hmm. because he's just able to weave himself into the back line. Target selection, beautiful from him. He understands Marta wanted to be the tank, and he had enough damage to take him out. 
Yeah, RNG came in pretty hard front line under a turret. on that first turret, and Looper doesn't have ultimate here to beef up his front line either. Great Zonya's timing by Faker as well, and uh, with the front line down, SKT's very easily able to run at them. More kills for Faker's Fizz, but just hasn't appeared to be enough. It's the interesting thing is both these teams came in with a plan. SKT banned two mid laners, said Shaohu, pick your LeBlanc, we'll play Fizz into it, it'll be great. And hey, Faker's six and three on a losing team, that's mm -hmm. solid. Royal's plan, we're gonna ban two top laners, grab the poppy because Looper's gonna crush you. That plan is working better. And it's the early game plan, I think, that's also working for RNG. The fact that they were able to pick themselves into a bunch of pushing lanes while still having the Nidalee just allowed them to push through the map and continually get those gold leads. And in a series with RNG, you tell me they ban Alistair Maokai on the blue side, I say you're crazy, but the priority mm -hmm. they've given to their jungler and the power they gave to uh, MLXG to pressure lanes. I mean, he's 0-2-6, but he was just able to put the jungle on farm and get into the mid lane, get into the bottom lane and force them off minion waves, go top, get a 40 CS lead for his top laner. Yeah, this will be the attempt at the final push. The idea for RNG is they get all the waves going at the same time. They don't have Baron, they don't have Fifth Dragon, but they still want to push with these triple inhibitors being down. When the super minions are there, yep. even if SKT tries to fight them, it's going to hurt. The ricochet is actually insane in these situations because it can cut through all the minions. And it gets rid of the minions. Mata flashes away with the shark, doesn't tag any more of his teammates. Duke QSS is off the trundle ulti. Looper will not get any more stats for this one. Faker brought back near to full health thanks to Wolf's play, but here's the next round of the minion waves. Mid inhibitor respawns, but that'll be an easy take for RNG, but it gives SKT time to knock down that bot oh, lane Duke. minion wave. But Duke, a bit far forward, taking plenty of damage, but he's gonna stay alive for now. Here's the tackle on the front line. Mata, a bit low. Duke, dangerous as well. Mata has to run out. Faker pops his zone. Looper has GA, but he's very, very low. The slow tags on, and they're gonna chase it a blink. Can't quite kill him off. Bang, has to flash away from a trundle pillar. Mata stops it, MLXG. and has to kill an MLX chain. But they trade back in a bang. Woosh has to kite out, and Faker gets him. A two for one to SKT, but the top lane is taking a lot of damage thanks to the minion wave. They're Blink is behind. out of mana, and here comes the damage up, but Faker's out of mana as well. They just can't fight back, but here they might comes get Duke. Though. They want Shaohu, and I don't think they can get the Nexus, so here comes the damage up, but there's the shutdown. It's Looper alone against the world, and can he get anything is else done? Is he is on. trying to win they got by kill himself. Get it. The he is unkillable. And Looper. Looper wins game one for China. <laughs> With all the minions dying, he kept sustaining through the fight with the Trundle passive. And at 1v3 at the end of the game, he just waltzes in to finish it. What an ending. And finally, Royal just hard commit to the Baron, to the end game push. They're sick of playing this where they can't close out games, so they go hard. They risk losing, but they end up winning. I love High Risk League of Legends. Oh my I love the goodness. plan they went for. The eggs in the looper basket. I mean, we talk about high risk League of Legends, and even though SKT was picking a disengage composition, picking that fizz as the first fizz at MSI is also high risk. Uh, so both there was these some teams top wanted to do that. And also first, first mid lane fizz. There we go. Yeah, the first mid lane fizz. So it doesn't actually change <laughs> our totally unique champions. You're absolutely right about that. But oh man. We were wondering if the SKT team was going to bounce back and just look dominant like everyone expected them to coming in. The answer to that is a definitive no after one game because RNG looked just as good, if not better, than they did in group stage. The question for RNG was, can they do anything but team fight? Answer, yes. Pick three winning lanes, get a pressure jungler, smash them in the early game, then pull the map apart. Yeah, I was actually really impressed to see RNG be able to use a lead that wasn't just Xiaohu. Right, okay, mm -hmm. the, the, MLXG has camped that mid lane, the level three Graves gank. We've seen it like three times now. Okay, well, LeBlanc's out first blood. Go Shao, who tried to carry us. But this time it was Looper. It was playing for that top lane matchup, get it ahead, and that wedged most of those 25 minute leads that RNG had. And, and it, it meant so much. It meant the first four turrets. Yeah, and I'm just thinking about SKT, like in their huddle, what are they gonna be able to tweak in that last game? Because they had four days to come up with this strategy. They don't get to switch sides of maps and they've already tried some strategy tweaks in the group stage. I don't know what they're gonna do next. You gotta figure out what it's going to be. It's gonna be a great series. It's the best of five for a spot in the finals at MSI. So Dash, take it away.